right, so if we look at the results of our OCR microservice, we get an image like this, and it extracts that value into a dictionary value like this, where it has a list of results as well as the original in here. So what I wanna do now is I actually wanna convert this to being a little bit more usable. That is something that's ready for our recipe ingredient model, or at least a recipe ingredient model form. Now I'm gonna be doing this using pure Python. I'm not gonna use Django at all for this, just pure Python and creating a file called extractexample.py. And it's gonna be using the number string to float utility function that I created for a previous you know, part. And that function itself is actually gonna be ran through Django. So I just wanted it all in one single extraction example. And then we'll go ahead and update that utility function once we work this all out. So the idea here is we take an extracted value and we wanna just print out whatever that extracted value is with the original key. So if I run this, which in my case is Python recipes extract example.py, I'll get something like this. Now you don't have to put it in the same place, but the general idea is you should be able to print out this string because this is what we're gonna be working off of. Now I'm gonna make the huge assumption that each one of these recipe ingredients will start with a number or a fraction. Using that as a baseline will mean that I can actually iterate through each word in here, literally each word, and look for numbers and strings. When I hit a new number, it's gonna start a new string that we want to extract. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take a look. First off, we're gonna go ahead and do for line in og.split. So in the original string here, this original paragraph, I'm just gonna split it up and look at line by line. This is actually most likely gonna be word by word, so you can use line or word, doesn't really matter, it just matters that we split up the original string, whatever that is. I run this again and here we go. We've got this nice long string of numbers and text, right? So in it, instead of doing a regular expression where we're trying to extract from each result, right? So something like this, something like this. I just use this number to string float to really look for the start and the end of one of these things based off of if it's a number that can be turned into a float, right? That would include a fraction like this as well as decimal numbers. So let's go ahead and give that one a shot. So this time I'm gonna just go ahead and say the val equals to that with line, and then we'll just go ahead and print out what that value is. We'll go ahead and print out the line as well. So we run this, and what we see here is a tuple coming back that's showing us either the original value that's coming through or a string of a number, and then the float coming back. So that's pretty cool. So that also means that we can really see if the number of float is coming through and whether or not it was successful. So I can really just break this up and say something like this. And now, if it's a success, then we can actually see all of those lines and we'll be able to see exactly what's going on here. So we see the original and the extracted one. Now, I'm actually gonna ignore the extracted one going forward. I'm just gonna continue to use the line, but the difference here is I actually want to make a new string of values. So if I go ahead and say results in here like this, make sure I don't have that variable anywhere else, I'm gonna go ahead and say, if it's a success, then I'm gonna go ahead and append the previous string. What do I mean by this? Well, if I go ahead and say current string equals to an empty string, if it's successful, then I'll just do results.append the current string, and then I'll go ahead and create a new current string by just declaring it like this and putting in an F string with that starting line. Right? And so if I actually look at the results now, let's go ahead and just print out the results after the for loop. What I hope I see is a new list with at least the raw number that's coming through there. So let's run this again. And sure enough, I do. So here's all of those raw numbers. So I've now really extracted that early number that it is getting closer to being what exactly that I wanted, at least for this portion, right? So the other part of this is I can actually say else if it's not successful, so if it's not a number, if it's not able to be converted to a float, then I'll just go ahead and grab the, whatever the current string value is, and I'll do plus equals to 
that line value as well. I will actually add in a space here just to make it a space. Um, another way to think about this is you could just go ahead and use it as an like a list itself um, and do it that way, but I'm gonna leave it in as a string like this. And so I'll go ahead and run this again, and there we go. So I do have a, a starting string that's empty, which we can remove in a second, um, but all the other strings are close to exactly what it is that we're looking for, right? Now it's not perfect, but it's close, right? So when I say it's not perfect, we've got one tablespoon of olive oil here, and we've got, I don't see, there's two tablespoons of olive oil. So that's a little confusing, actually. And I realize why it's confusing, because if you look at the image, there's actually two tablespoons of olive oil and then one tablespoon of olive oil. So perhaps we have both of them, perhaps we don't. Um, it really is hard to tell. It looks like we do not have both of them. And so that is a problem with our split function here. So I noticed that there's a bunch of new lines in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and replace those with just an empty string with a space. And then I'll, I'll go ahead and replace the F as well, also with a space, okay? So then when I do split it, it will split a little bit better. So now if I run it, um, I should see it split up just closer to what we're trying to achieve here and perhaps I need to actually run og.split on those empty spaces. And in that case, it's now giving me a lot closer to what I'm looking for. So we've got that one tablespoon of olive oil here and that two tablespoon one, and also even the squeamish of lime at the very end. Okay, so it's now giving us closer to what the results are. Now, of course, the current string itself, we'll go ahead and say if current string uh, is not equal to just an empty string, then we'll go ahead and append, append those results. And now hopefully we see a little bit closer to what we're looking for with everything here. And I think it actually looks pretty good as far as the recipes are concerned. Now what I actually append, I also wanna go ahead and just strip it down so there are no trailing strings or anything like that. And there we go, cool. So this is the first method here. This is basically just putting all of the ones with numbers and putting it into a string. So I'm gonna define, we're gonna say parse paragraph to uh, recipe line, something like that. And we'll go ahead and say the results or re rather the paragraph. And it's gonna run through all of this. So we cut that out, paste in here. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and return the results. Okay, get rid of that and go up a little bit and then this paragraph is gonna come in here. Cool, so now we'll go ahead and just say the OG, or actually the results equals to that, along with the OG coming through. Now, what I actually wanna do is instead of doing this inside or like on the extracted text, I'm actually gonna do it in here. So paragraph equals to paragraph dot all of those things. And if I needed to add more in the future, I totally could, or strip all of them away. Like a, you could also do something like, you know, a T, any of the Python formatting things, we just wanna put them into just an empty string altogether. Okay, cool. The main reason being, the reason there is a space there is because if we look at this right here, if I put them into empty strings, it would do oil squeeze like that. So we wanna avoid that as much as possible. And so now that we've got this, we should be able to go ahead and print out the results and run it again. And now it's all split up and it should be everything that we were looking for originally. Cool. So now that we've got this, we have to actually convert this into something even closer to a recipe ingredient itself. So this one is gonna be converting it to quantity units. So going off of this result still, we're gonna go ahead and do four I and X and enumerate our results. So enumerate will give us our iteration and X. And at this point, it should just give us all of those values there, looking pretty good so far. And what I wanna do here is I wanna set up a data set, okay? So this data set is gonna be very similar to what we just did. And we probably could combine these two I'm gonna not combine them to make things just a little bit more simple for me in the use of these functions. 
So what I wanna do here is I want to, again, actually go line by line in the sentence. So this is really the sentence or the actual value, uh, but I'll leave it in as X and I'll go ahead and say words equals to X dot split. Okay, so the X itself is gonna be a string, so we could do split of a space, right? And we could actually print out, so for word in words, you can print out what the word is, get rid of the enumeration and run this again. Now I should see everything all over again, right? So as you can see, this is where we probably could have done these things up here, uh, but I'm doing it based off of each line, which makes it a little bit different for our final data set. And this should actually be an empty list here. Okay, so what I wanna do now is again, I wanna actually use this same feature here, but I also wanna have something above here, the actual loop of the words themselves. I wanna say, QTY being none, QTY raw being none, the units, the actual units for whatever the item is in here being none, and then finally the other words, I'll just put into a list called other, okay? So we're using a very similar method here where it's gonna come through, actually grab the float number based off of whatever it is. So we'll go ahead and do word. So now what I wanna do is say if success, then we're gonna go ahead and say the QTY is equal to whatever that value is. So the actual extracted float value. And then the QTY raw is gonna be equal to the original word. Now this is for display purposes, much like the rationale behind allowing the user to write whatever they want and then updating the quantity itself. This is gonna do that same sort of thing. But now what we're gonna do is just say continue. So what that means is I'm setting the QTY, QTY and QTY bra up here, and then I'm gonna continue in the iteration. So the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and do our iteration unit, and we're gonna set this equal to none. And then we wanna try and set this iteration unit off of, what do we use? Well, we actually want to use pint again. So from the very top, I'll go ahead and do from pint import unit registry, right? And so the unit registry is gonna allow us to verify if we have a unit value of some kind. So above our data set, we'll go ahead and do ureg equals to unit registry. And now down here, again, we're gonna go ahead and use the word that's being iterated through from ureg and whatever that word is, and then dot units, okay? And then we'll go ahead and say accept pass. So in this case, we are looking for the unit if the word itself is a valid unit, right? So if it's a valid unit, then we'll go ahead and do this. Now, the first thing is we'll go ahead and say if the units is none and the iter units is not none. So in other words, we are really looking for the first matching unit, right? So it should be you know, one pound, but if it says one pound and then sprinkle another pound, it's only gonna get that first one or one pound and then sprinkle an ounce of water. It's not gonna get both of those things. Um, it's just gonna get the first one, which we'll see in a moment. So with this, the iter unit is not none. The original units, whatever this is, is gonna be none. And then we'll just say units is equal to the iteration unit. And then finally, we'll just go ahead and say else other dot append the word itself. Okay, so we did a lot here. Now, again, this is gonna loop through every list item or the sentence itself. This is the sentence that's being split up. So X dot split is the sentence being split up into words. All of those words are gonna be iterated through and these values are gonna represent that same sentence. So then the final data after all those words are done, we can say QTY is QTY, QTY raw is QTY raw. And then the other is gonna be the other being joined together with a string here. So join other. And then of course the unit is units or unit or units. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and do data set dot append the data. And then after all that's said and done, we're gonna go ahead and print out that data set. Let's go ahead and run it again. 
And now there we go. So um, this is showing us exactly what we're looking for. So the quantity being here, unit being, uh, you know, the quantity one, and the raw quantity is also one, the string of one. But if we look at the one fourth right here, it's giving us 25.25 and it's also giving us the one fourth there. And then finally, we actually have the unit in here, which I'm actually gonna turn into a string as well. Um, so it's the actual string value instead of the class value from pint, but it's giving us those class values. So I'm gonna run that again and there we go. So it should give us those proper units and everything. Pretty cool. And the squeeze of lime, hey, what do you know? It actually did come out. It does not have any quantities in there, which is fine. It just gives us this other value. So this of course is the last thing that I need to actually convert into a function. And this one is just gonna be, um, we'll define this as convert to QTY units. And it's gonna take in a results list. So we'll go ahead and make this an optional value that we need to bring in here or a um, type value. So we'll do from typing import the list. Okay, so this is just a really good thing to do is to actually add the data types. If you don't know what any of that means, just go ahead and put results in there. That's fine. And then we wanna actually tab all of this stuff over and put it into our function. Let's scroll up a bit and tab it over. There we go. And so nice and formatted. And then we're gonna go ahead and return data set at the end. And then now we've got our data set equaling to this convert to units from our results. And now I'm also gonna go ahead and put these down at the bottom as well. And so I can print out my data set and my results, run it again, and now it's showing me both of those things. So it's actually working correctly. Now, of course, the main reason for all of this was to literally copy these functions right here into our Django utilities, okay? Because this is what we're gonna end up using. And this extract example, well, we don't really need it anymore, but I will keep it in here for you to reference at any time. Uh, but now that we have this, we should implement this into our actual uh, recipe ingredient workflow or somewhere in the view itself, which we'll still work on in a future one. But for now, we have a way to parse this out. This of course is a useful way to just get any string, any paragraph that has numbers in front of it and just parse those things out as well, which I think is really useful and then turn it into numbers. Now, one of the challenges I'd leave with you is to convert both of these, like combine them together and see how you can actually run it in one single function that may or may not be more efficient than this. I'm sure there is probably a way to be more efficient here, uh, but we're gonna leave it just like this so it's nice and clear and easy to understand, hopefully easy to understand everything that's going on.